So I thought it will be interesting to show you uh, everything which is going on into the creation of uh, one of my tutorials, kind of like behind the scenes slash devlog. And right now it is Friday night or uh, actually Saturday morning because it is already uh, 1 p.m. It's not the most ideal time to start a new tutorial but I've just finished, almost finished the previous one on the Skybox and I've just sent it to the Patreon supporters so it will be available for everyone else in a couple of days. Now the next tutorial is going to be about uh, user clip lanes in OpenGL which is actually um, a prerequisite for an upcoming tutorial on water rendering which of course is very uh, interesting and so in this video I will try to document every step that goes into the production of this video hope I won't miss anything uh, it will take uh, quite a few days as, as you shall see but this is how it works for me right now now the first step always always is to get some sample up and running and from there I continue to uh, scripting, recording, editing and uh, all the rest so uh, let's fire up uh, Visual Studio and uh, get to work Okay, so the clip plane demo is coming along very nicely. You can play with the angle of the clip plane. So you can see right here and you can raise it or decrease the height. Yeah, fortunately, it is already almost 3 a.m. So I think I'm gonna wrap up for tonight and maybe continue tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, so it's Thursday, almost uh, 2.20 a.m. And I think I've got most of the script ready. Yeah, it's just over uh, 1,100 words. Okay, so it, it's almost complete. I think uh, I'll wrap up for the day and continue tomorrow night, do some editing and uh, probably flash out a few more points. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to record it tomorrow night as well. So this will be interesting. So this is my recording setup and I'm using the Rode NT Mini USB microphone to record. It's a pretty good microphone. The thing is that it is a condenser type microphone, which means that it is very sensitive and picks up a lot of background noise. So it's great if you have an acoustically treated room, which is isolated. Um, unfortunately, this room is not. So I was not aware of this fact when I started. So maybe I should have picked up uh, a dynamic microphone, which, um, uh, which isolates background noises uh, much more efficiently. But the only downside is that you need to keep the dynamic microphone very close to your mouth compared to this one. So I'm thinking about replacing this microphone with the uh, Shure MV7, which is, of course, a dynamic microphone. And I have the microphone boomed on the Rode PSA-1 boom arm, which is pretty solid. Be careful, there are a lot of cables here. And I have the script on this screen and Audacity on this one. So this allows me to monitor the recording as I'm reading, just in case something goes bad because of some crazy Windows thing. Audacity is a free and well-established tool for recording. Many people are using it and I'm very happy with it. I do all the editing here, as well as noise reduction, compressor, and things like that. What you think, what you think about When you're born into a fire Let them burn, let them burn it out Okay, now that the recording is complete, I switch the monitors so I have the Audacity on the main monitor, which is where I'm going to do all the editing, and the script is on the other monitor uh, to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And I have something like almost 27 minutes for the little bit over 1300 words, which is what the script eventually came out to. Now I make a lot of mistakes in my recording, so this will be trimmed down drastically after I remove all the junk. Ok, 
Okay, so editing is complete and we are down to 8 minutes and almost 20 seconds. All of this work took about an hour. And now we can move to the next phase of the production. I'm going to export this uh, audio into a WAV file and import it into DaVinci Resolve, which is what I'm using for the actual video production. Okay, it looks good. Let's watch it one more time before we export it. So the video has been published, but in addition to the thumbnail, the title and the video description, there is a ton of other stuff that I still need to do, which is why I keep a checklist. Okay, I need to add time codes so that people can skip back and forth based on the chapters in the video. I also like to fix the subtitles that YouTube is auto-generating, and this is where having a script really helps, but there is also a code review section without a script so there's more work there. In the video description I need to give credit to other people whose work I've used, so stuff like textures, models and music in the video. For example, in this video I'm using music from Stream Bits by Harris Heller. Uh, by the way, you can find Harris on the Senpai Gaming channel doing uh, streaming gear reviews. I need to provide early access to the Patreon supporters and check in the code to GitHub. Also make sure that it builds on Linux but I'm always late in doing that. And then when the video goes public, I need to announce it pretty much wherever I can. So Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, my own website, and various people who are also helping me here. You won't believe how much this extra effort is important. About one third of the views are actually coming externally from these sources. And that's about it. So if you'll excuse me, I need to start working on a new tutorial.